This is Digital Bike Computing. Today we're going to go through the steps on how to transfer all the data from a Windows PC to a new Mac. So you may have a PC running Windows, you've got a whole heap of data, it could be a work computer, it could be your own personal computer. You've just got yourself a new Mac or an older Mac or whatever it may be and you're going to do the transfer from one to the other. We're going to go through the steps on how to do that. Okay, so here we are on our two computers. We've got a Windows 10 computer here. This is a Lenovo, and we've got our MacBook Pro uh, running Mac OS. So we're gonna transfer data from this computer, our Windows 10 computer, over to this computer. You can transfer a number of things. You can download uh, all the users from here, so whatever user accounts you've got set up, transfer them over. Uh, you can also do uh, individual files. So if you've got like your C drive full of you know, documents and movies, etc., you can get those transferred over to your Mac as well. A uh, couple of things that you want to ensure that you do uh, before you begin is making sure that they're both on the same network. So both the Windows and the Mac computers need to be accessible on the same uh, Wi-Fi network or connected directly via an Ethernet cable or connected to an Ethernet cable out to a uh, network switch of some sort. Um, if you are in an organization, you need to be mindful of things like firewalls, um, antivirus sort of software, endpoint protection software that could be blocking connections between the two. Uh, the other thing that's important is on the Windows computer, making sure that network discovery is on making sure that sharing is allowed, otherwise there can be problems connecting the two computers together to be able to transfer uh, the data over. So here we are on our Mac. Now I've just turned it on, uh, it's good to go and I then essentially now need to go through the configuration stages of setting this up. This does not go through a, a guide on how to transfer data from Windows to Mac on a computer, on a Mac that's already set up and working. Um, I do have other videos around that. This is assuming that this computer is a fresh install, it's brand new, or it's a fresh install of Mac OS, and it's blank, essentially. There's no data on here, and we wanted to transfer everything. You've done a migration, you wanna move from Windows to Mac, etc., etc. So let's just go through the standard steps of just configuring um, some basic things around the country. Keyboard layout, because I'm in Australia, I'm gonna select Australian. You wanna then connect to the wireless network. So as I said, you wanna connect them both on the wireless network. So your Windows PC having its wireless settings down here. Uh, on my Mac, I'm gonna run it over wireless or you can run it over ethernet. We're doing it over wireless. So connect to your wireless network, ensuring that they're both on the same network. Once it's connected, you click on next on around data security. And here is where we actually select that you wanna transfer data from a Windows PC. There are a couple of other options around transferring data from an existing Mac to this new Mac, from Time Machine backups, etc. Or you can just set it as do not transfer anything and essentially by going through that option, you're gonna configure the Mac as if it's brand new and not have any data on it uh, and you have to transfer the data manually yourself. But we're gonna go through this simple wizard uh, from a Windows PC and select on continue. Now it is recommended that both the Mac and the PC are connected uh, obviously to power if you're using, um, you know, the transferring data from one laptop to another. Uh, you don't want this operation to stop halfway through, so make sure that there's enough power on the computers or that they're actually plugged into an AC power point. And you'll see that now we're on this screen uh, where it's looking for a source. So what the Mac is doing is the Mac is going out to the network and trying to look for a uh, computer that is running the migration wizard uh, out on the network. At the moment, we haven't done anything on the Windows PC, so we need to do that first to be able to get the Mac to see it. You'll see that down the bottom, it actually says you need to download some software. So you need to download what's called a migration assist assistant. The web address is down the bottom, www.apple.com forward slash migrate dash two dash Mac. So if you go to that web address, on your Windows PC, all right, open up any browser, go to the web address that's listed down here. You'll then be presented with a screen to download this application here called Migration Assistant, Windows Migration Assistant. So this has already been downloaded. I've already installed it. We're not gonna go through the steps. It's, it's really just a simple download from the Apple website. You download it, you install it, you let, you know, you give the Windows um, permissions to use that application if it does give you any warnings. And that's it. So then the next step is really just to open up the application. We're gonna say yes. 
and now we've got the Migration Assistant open. You may get a warning where you have a particular application open in the background. If you do get that warning, uh, you can't continue the Migration Assistant until those apps are shut. So go and close any applications that you may have running on the Windows computer before commencing. So once we're good to go, click on the Continue. It's giving you a warning there around Windows updates. So if you have Windows updates configured to download automatically, uh, it's just really telling you um, that you, you know, your operation could be interrupted if uh, that happens uh, while this migration is taking place. So you can disable those or you can just you know, click continue if you're confident. Now right there, you'll see that the Windows PC has just been detected. So because this is now running, this is also going out to the network and sort of saying, hey, is there a Mac there that I can connect to? This has found it, it's found the name. And that's good, so that's the first step. At least we now know that they can connect to each other, they can see each other on the network. Select the computer and click on continue. A code will then show up, making sure that the code is exactly the same, 797819, showing up on both screens. We're good, so on the Windows PC, click on continue. So it's just gathering some information now around your Windows PC, and you'll see that it's now found um, essentially all the data that is residing on your Windows PC, including users and all of my files that are residing inside of my C drive. Uh, so my C drive is my hard drive on my Windows PC. If you have multiple drives, like a C and a D and an E drive, for example, they should all show up in there. But this is really just a summary of all of the data that is residing on my Windows PC. So here you can select ex essentially what you wanna transfer over. If you wanna transfer everything, leave everything ticked and click on continue. If you wanna select only certain things to transfer over, then you can do that. So what I'm gonna do just to make this process a little bit quicker, I'm going to untick that and I want to select uh, that I want to transfer, oh, just let, let's just say a couple of disk and drivers, something very, very tiny. Um, if you do have um, my documents, videos, those sort of things, things on your desktop, uh, you'll, you can actually select those and they will also transfer over. Uh, into the appropriate folders on your window on your Mac computer. So we're selecting just that just to keep this process um, quick. But I would recommend if you're wanting to have a, you know, the computers to look as much um, well as, as similar as possible between the two. Obviously, configurations and preferences will look different. But as long as you want all your data and all of your user profiles to move over, select everything as a precaution. And it's now saying that that process will take around two minutes to complete. You'll see it's got the same setup across both uh, the Windows and the Mac computers. And then once that's done, we should be able to then see that data now residing on the Mac. So that is it. So that is finished on its own. And now I now go through the basic configuration of my uh, computer itself, of my Mac itself. Signing with your Apple ID. Uh, if you don't have one, you can go and create a new Apple ID right here. You can also set it up later if you so need to. I recommend that you do the Apple ID setup right here. It just makes the whole process a lot smoother. So that Apple ID has now been put in. It's authenticated myself. It's found that I have an actual active Mac account. You can agree to the terms and conditions if you're happy with that. So with your Apple ID, it may have already populated some information, including your full name and its recommended account name for you. You can change this. So I've just left my name as Emilio, my account name as Emilio. I've put in the password that I want to use uh, to log in. I can put in an optional hint, which I can say normal password, something like that. And you can also allow your Apple ID to reset this password. So if you log into another device, uh, using your Apple ID, you can actually configure uh, this so that you can reset your Mac password straight through your Apple ID. Your account will then be created and now iCloud will start to do its thing in the background, including setting up your account and getting this working as it should be. Presented with some express setup options here uh, that you can go and configure, you can customize things like Siri, Maps, etc. help Apple improve its, its thing, its products. I'm gonna say continue. So you've got full Siri integration on your Mac, so you can leave that as enabled uh, if you want to use Siri on your Mac, which is quite nice to have from time to time. So you can set that up now, or you can set that up later. We'll just uh, may as well do that now, and that's it. So after a few different commands, it sort of now recognizes your voice, and it's ready to go. 
You can choose to encrypt your hard drive using FileVault. Uh, change your look. Uh, I like the dark look. The dark look is something that was introduced in newer versions of Mac OS. Uh, but you can pick light or dark. Let's just go to dark. I think it looks pretty, pretty slick. And it's doing some final setting up of my Mac. So that process is now completed. So we're now configured the Mac, we've logged in, and everything should look very similar from a data perspective uh, to your Windows PC. Now, because my Windows PC is on a corporate network, the users do not move over. It's more if you have just some local users created on your Windows computer. But all the data that I selected will now be listed in here. Uh, in my case, they're just listed under users, shared, and you'll see there's a folder in here called files from C drive. And they're the two folders that I selected on my Windows PC to transfer over. The way that you can access that is by going into go, go to folder, and then just a forward slash to go to that folder specifically. But if you do have, uh, as I said, my documents and some other things around your specific profile, it will try to place that in the appropriate location to try to make the data reside in a similar place as possible. Now, of course, because Windows and Mac are different, um, it's not always gonna get that right. As long as you get your data over, I think that, that is the most important thing. So there you go, that, that is the simple uh, process to get the data moved from one to another. Uh, very straightforward, um, and it's very, very easy to do via or via a wizard called Windows uh, Migration Assistant. Would love it if you like this video, and also follow and subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, for a whole bunch of more videos. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.